Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios, and this week, uh, the people who make Reaper, Kokos, have uh, released Reaper version 6. So we're going to take a look at what's new, what's changed, what hasn't changed, and try and get into some of the details. <laughs> So if you've not seen me before, a little bit of background, I've been using Reaper as a producer uh, for about 12 years now. I think the, the early version of Reaper 3 was when I started. So I've been following its progress all along. Big fan. Uh, you may have seen my Reaper Basics tutorial, if not, check that out. That's based in Reaper 5, uh, but not a great deal has changed in terms of the basics. So that's a really good thing to know. So let's have a quick look at the Reaper website very quickly where we can see that Reaper version 6.01 has been released. Um, it's now Monday, uh, last Wednesday uh, Reaper 6.0 was released and within a week they've already released the first little upgrade version. That's very typical of the people who make Reaper. It's really quite impressive how quickly they turn around and upgrade and improve and so there's all these new features that we're going to talk about. And one of the things, again, that's worth talking about in terms of Reaper is unlike most of the other DAWs, you don't tend to get a huge chunk of features that come in a new version. And the reason for that is that as small updates and upgrades come to Reaper, like we got 5.3, 5.4, 5.5, none of which are paid upgrades, by the way, um, new features would come in, like there was a, a sheet music notation came in, and uh, ARA, which is the real-time Melodyne thing where you don't have to transfer anymore, they came in in the meantime, in between Reaper 5.0, and now, so there have been some really quite key features for me that have just come in as and when they've been ready and as and when they've been released. So if there's anything that you seem a little disappointed with Reaper 6 with the, the new feature set, don't worry about that. If you get Reaper 6 now and any features come out, they will just be released as and when they're ready and you won't have to wait years for Reaper 7 to come out. That's the way that these guys seem to work and I really dig that. So, I downloaded Reaper 6, got it installed, and it looked like this, which really quite confused me, because this looks like Reaper 5. Now, I um, found out why. Uh, if you've already got Reaper 5 installed, and you overwrite the new version on top, which is the way that I tend to work, it keeps your preferences, and in any version of Reaper, you can go back and use old themes, so by default, mine was still using the theme for version 5. So what I had to do was go to Options and Themes and then choose the default, so the new default. And the new default looks like this. And this is quite different. This is a lot darker. The colours jump out at me quite a lot more. Everything's a little bit more blocky, a bit more flat. The text seems more readable, which uh, took me a minute to get used to, I'll admit, but... Everything seems to be making sense now that my eyes are adjusting to it. There's always an initial adjustment period when you go through an upgrade with software that's got a different look to it. That's just, you're so used to one thing. But one of the brilliant things for me is not a great deal has moved. So, um, I've brought up a project, a very basic project, that's got some drums, bass and guitars in it that is not mixed at all. These are all just the raw microphones, a couple of little plugins on the kick and snare and the toms. That's it. So this gives us a perfect opportunity to look at some of these new features. So, the main new feature for me is the FX plugin embedding. So if you've got loads of screen real estate, this will be really good for you. Or if you work in live sound, this might be absolutely what you're looking for. So uh, let's just find, oh, I don't know, a bass track. So let's put the bass over here and just play a little bit of this bass track. <laughs> 
So if I was to add an EQ traditionally, I would find my Reaper EQ and do what I wanted to do with that EQ. So. Cool. Now, here's a cool thing. Where it says re-EQ in my mixer window, if I right click on that and find show embedded UI, there's TCP, which is the track view, and MCP, which is a mixer view. If I click MCP, you'll see that underneath Reaper, now I can actually see this uh, EQ curve is now right there. And if I hit play, I can actually see that little FFT going so I can see how much bass and treble and everything's in a channel, which is really quite useful, like I said, for, for live sound. If I was to use the old shortcut, let's flatten these. Uh, let's just take them down. I'll not disable them. I'll just make them flat. I can copy this over to any other channel. And what that means then is by doing this really quickly, I've got an EQ now on every single channel from the bass across all the guitars where I can choose to mess with things, I can choose to see. In live sound, if there's a big spike, I'll be able to see things like feedback and which channel it is without any hesitation. And they're all going, and I can choose any point on this. I don't have to open the EQ. I can go and just muddle these around, do whatever I like with them. And that's not just the EQ either. That's any uh, plugin that the guys who make Reaper have made uh, that supports that graphical interface thing. So the Reaper compressors can do it, both Recomp and Re-X Comp. So the Re-X Comp's really cool. That's the uh, multi-band one. So if I say, pull up a de uh, and pull it in the track control panel. Now it's quite small, but I can expand these tracks here. So if I change my track layout to be 150% or even 200%, which is more useful uh, if you've got a really big screen. So let's say you're working on a 4K screen, you've got all, or 5K and you've got this whole retina thing going on. That's a new feature as well, is that whole thing that I just did then with turning this to 150 or 200% in terms of uh, screen space means that if you've got a massive screen and all these items are really small and you're struggling to see them you can change everything to be 150 percent if i go to themes layouts yeah mixer panel so if i change them all to be 150 percent there we go so they've all just expanded so that i can see things much more clearly from a distance. Again, that might be good in live sound. If you want the track view to be normal size and you want the mixer to be bigger so you can see all these plugins better from a distance, then that kind of thing is right there. I can put that back to global layout default. And let's say that I didn't want to have this up all the time. If I change that to the track control panel and just hide the mixer, I can make that as big as that track control. So now if I hit play, I can change whatever I want to with that live. I can see all the waveforms and that's just instantly there, which is really, really useful. I could put that EQ, for instance, uh, and I could do this with any of them. I'll show that in the track control panel so that as I make this bigger, I can see EQs for tr uh, tracks without having to go back to the mix window. And that means that then if I want to be editing most of the time in the track control panel, but every now and again, I hear something like an EQ change I want to make, I can just reach over, not have to change window, find the EQ point and do that. <laughs> That's going to be a massive time saver, which has always been the thing with Reaper for me, is the massive time savings. That's what it's all about. 
there are so many more effects that, uh, that Reaper make. And I would imagine going forward, other plugin manufacturers will collaborate with them and enable that to be a thing with their plugins as well, because it's very much in their best interest to do so. Something that I've been after for years, uh, MIDI CC envelopes. So I'm just going to quickly make a MIDI item and show you this. So if I go insert new MIDI item there and I'll make a couple of notes. And traditionally, let's have a look at the bottom here. So this is where all our MIDI information goes. So let's say I've got the good old mod wheel and I've got a sin that goes wow, wow, wow. Um, traditionally, I would draw them in and you had to have all these horrible points, that kind of thing, which you can still do, but it does mean that each separate point can be a real pain in the backside. And if you want to change it subtly later, tough. But what you can do now is if I add in a couple of points, I can right click and change that because traditionally those two points would only be a linear scale between them. Uh, or would it? No. In Reaper, it wouldn't even do that. It would just change from one to the next, I believe. Uh, so now I can change that to be a curve. Select the two of them. Curve shape. Let's say that's a bezier now. So I don't know if you can see the difference there, but uh, let's make it a different type. Let's change this to be uh, square. That's the traditional one. And we can change it again to be fast start, fast end. So now instead of it having to be straight lines or those awful uh, these things, instead we can have these really nice natural smooth MIDI movements with two points. So it's infinitely controllable. And I really think that that's so nice. That's something that's going to make MIDI automation so much better for me in the future. So again, thanks to the guys at Make Reaper because that's so good. It's auto stretch time base. Um, so apparently if you make complex tempo changes now, it used to be that it would be quite awkward that the um, time stretching would be, uh, you put a time stretch point here, point here, point here, and audio would stretch fairly rigidly. Uh, it seems now it'll be much more elastic. So you'll be able to move tempos around much more dynamically. Uh, now, here's something that I found really interesting. So if I go to view, <coughs> there's track wiring now. So there's like a track wiring diagram. So if you've got folders, you've got groups, you've got sends, you've got buses, you can see them all now. You can see everything laid out. If that's the way you prefer to look at things, like an actual electrical routing, you can see where a send goes. You can see where a receive comes from. You can see folders. You can see track arms and where everything comes from and goes to. It's very, very nice. Like I was talking about before with Retina, if you've got a, or high DPI, if you've got a really uh, big screen that's got the Retina and high DPI type thing, um, it should automatically uh, scale properly. And if you natively want that to change to be bigger and bigger, there are buttons for that, as I previously showed. One that's hard to describe, but will definitely feel is a large project improvement. So sometimes I'll be working on a video that's like a demo video shooting out like different drum skins was a great example where we'd have 10 mics on the drum kit and 15 different audio sources. So I'd have hundreds of channels and that can really cause your computer to panic a little bit. But apparently now it's all been rewritten so that um, if you've got some crazy 64 core 128 thread processor, Reaper can now take advantage of all of those cores and threads, provided you've got enough channels to take advantage of those. And also, if you're on one of the newer Mac OS uh, setups, uh, Metal is like their underlying graphics system, and now uh, Reaper supports that as well, so that everything works that little bit easier. And there are so many little things as well. If you want to have an entire track and nudge it forwards or backwards by a few milliseconds, few samples for whatever reason, you can now do it per track rather than per item, uh, which means that then when you record new things into that track, they automatically do 
exactly as you asked for for the entire track. Apparently the sample rate conversion's better, uh, higher quality, uh, faster as well. Uh, there is so much uh, there. One that really I like is the theme adjuster. Let's just make a couple of these tracks a little bit bigger. Now, one thing is a great example that changed between Reaper 4 and Reaper 5 was uh, this little volume knob here. It used to be a slider, and I much prefer that slider, and now there's a thing called the theme adjuster. So if I go to options themes, there's theme adjuster right here, and this is all new. And so I can change things here. So I can change like the volume size says knob. I can change that to be a slider, bigger and bigger sliders. I love the sliders. So that's staying for me. Uh, and then the sizes you can change. You can change the sizes of the names. Uh, you can change how big your recording meters are so that when you're recording, you can get nice big meters just on a a theme change here. You can hide certain things so that when you're recording or when you're not recording, if you don't need to see things, you can clear the view. There's so much that you can change and you can have multiple layouts. You can change it off of the mixer, have custom color themes without having to change the entire, uh, let's just, uh, yep, recall a project using this palette. And there's just so much in there. And the thing that's really important for me is like I was saying with Reaper 5, more and more features were added as time went on. And I think that's gonna be exactly the same case here. So if you already bought Reaper 5, you already own a license for Reaper 6 because they give you two full versions in there. If you are thinking about buying Reaper 6, absolutely go ahead and do it because all the features that aren't there yet, if you request them enough, they get put in and Reaper 7 will be coming and you will have a license for that as well. And for the very low price that Reaper is, it makes absolutely no sense for me not to buy it because compared to any DAW, <coughs> compared to any other DAW, it's just absolutely value. And I didn't get it for the value, I got it for the power and performance of it. So everything's there for the taking. So hope you found this useful. Check out the Reaper tutorial series that we've done if you haven't already. And keep in mind that anything that was there that was done for Reaper 5 will still work in Reaper 6 perfectly well. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our Facebook and Twitter or our Patreon page which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.